Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Blocking foreign criminal law will be a gift for UKIP, says Conservative MP. Pickles lowers the EU's flag. Department of Communities will pin flag on notice board in unused room. EU judges and Danish welfare. EU membership boosts Britain's goods trade by 30%. Plus, top EU law professor criticises SNP's plans for EU membership. It's Thursday, 30th of January. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Blocking foreign criminal law will be a gift for UKIP, says Conservative MP. The Conservative Party will hand a gift to UKIP if proposals to tighten laws on departing foreign criminals are blocked this week, an MP has warned. Dominic Raab, the Conservative backbencher, urged the government to give proper parliamentary time to measures he has tabled to end human rights claims by foreign offenders on family life grounds. Ahead of a vote on an amendment to the immigration bill on Thursday, Mr Rabb said, If the party bosses manoeuvre to prevent the most popular amendment to this bill, even getting 10 minutes debate, it would reinforce the public's cynical perception that the political elite stitch up debate and ignore their concerns. It would be a bow-wrapped gift for UKIP, he said. David Cameron, the Prime Minister, faces a potential rebellion from backbenchers over the proposal. Do you know, you have to ask yourself a question about what is actually going on within our political establishment. Now, whether you agree or disagree with these policy amendments, it's an outrage that our lords and ministers are comfortable with actively disrupting and usurping the democratic process. Just as we saw on Tuesday when we reported on the 50 crazy amendments to the EU referendum bill introduced by the Lords, where it was clear that such ridiculous notions as mandating that the bill explicitly state the referendum question should be asked in Cornish was deliberate malevolence. It's an outrage, an affront to the democratic rights of people in Britain that our representatives in Parliament behave in this manner. Pickles lowers the EU flag. Department of Communities will pin flag on notice board in unused room. So Eric Pickles is to snub his nose at Brussels by announcing plans to celebrate Europe Day by flying the EU flag as far away from public view as possible. In a cellar. The Communities Secretary has successfully overturned a European Commission dictat that the 12-star banner must be flown outside the buildings of all government ministries for one week from the 9th of May. The Commission has rewritten its rules to state that the flag must still be displayed, but only somewhere on the premises, not necessarily outside. So, Mr Pickles has cheekily responded by pledging to unfurl the blue and yellow standard in a spare room in the basement of his Department of Communities and Local Government. And instead of being flown in the normal sense, the EU flag will simply be pinned on a notice board, in a sign of what the Communities Minister really thinks of Brussels. The basement room was previously used as a subsidised bar for civil servants, called the DETR Darts Bar, and opened by his predecessor John Prescott in the late 1990s. Mr Pickles closed the bar as part of cost-cutting measures to bring down the deficit. Now, I'm not discounting such saving measures, but it might take just a little more joined-up thinking than closing the public servant's darts bar to make a dent in the £700 million deficit. Once they start thinking about how to tackle the UK's £4 trillion debt problem, they'll no doubt have the snack vending machine and coffee percolator up for sale on eBay. Another front-page article, EU judges and Danish welfare. Once again, the EU courts have spurred debate, this time by hungrily devouring our welfare services. All EU citizens must have the same rights as us Danes, the European Court of Justice has decided. That means fundamental changes to our social benefit systems like unemployment benefits, education support and child support. 
The Danish welfare state's safety net will no longer merely cover grain to get sir. It will go from here all the way to Bucharest. That's what the EU judges have decided. Now, some say it's the wrong time to discuss the rulings and the role of the EU court. That has got to be because they don't understand the founding prerequisites of a democracy. That it's the voters and not a tiny elite who should be making political decisions. It should come as no surprise to viewers of the show that the EU's judges make political decisions. For instance, although they have no political or democratic mandate, it's the EU judges who have ruled the EU treaties should be directly applied to Denmark, and that the EU court has precedence. We should not forget the numerous rulings that have strengthened the EU's institutions at the expense of its member states. Time after time. It is decided that the EU Parliament, the EU Commission, and the EU Court of Justice have the authority, and our governments, parliaments, and courts simply have to step aside. So, folks, don't take our word for it. This article, running the prime time on our front page and written by Morton Messerschmidt, MEP for Dansk Folk Party, explains the power being wielded by these unelected authorities in the European institutions. We're certain here at the unit that when Monet put forth his vision for a single European nation, it was meant to be a Europe led by the people for the people, and not a quasi dictatorship served by the people. In this article, it reports that EU membership boosts Britain's goods trade by 30%. Britain's membership of the European Union boosts its trade in goods by about 30%, and there is no evidence it impedes trade with countries outside the 28-nation bloc. A pro-European think tank said in a report on Monday, the London-based Centre for European Reform predicted Britain would struggle to maintain trade with other EU member states. Now, 54% of goods trade if it left the bloc. Now, Prime Minister David Cameron has promised to renegotiate Britain's EU ties if his Conservative Party is re-elected in 2015, and then give Britain's an in-out membership referendum. Now, fearing defeat at the hands of the anti-EU UK Independence Party at European Parliament elections in May, lawmakers in his own party want him to explain by the end of February how he would renegotiate. Also, a slim majority of Britons are fed up with what they see as the EU's overbearing interference in national life, and would vote to leave the bloc if given the chance. The CER said it had used what it called a widely used economic model to test whether the EU boosted Britain's trade, and whether, as suggested by some EU critics, it constrained its ability to tap markets outside Europe. That's an interesting last statement, don't you think? The CER used a widely used economic model. I wonder if that's like the spreadsheet model that predicted fiscal Armageddon if we didn't bail out the banks. You know, the one that turned out to be wrong because the algorithms had errors in them. There are some big questions to ask about the economic thinking in UK politics: the exclusive use of Keynesian economic models throughout academia and forecasting. And there is already a growing body of people who believe these models to be wrong. Perhaps we should look to Norway or Switzerland for real-world examples of how non-member EU economies thrive. More news on the SNP's. Independence referendum in Scotland. This time, top EU law professor criticises SNP's plans for membership. The SNP government's preferred method for an independent Scotland to sign up fully to the European Union increases the risk of delay or even failure to its membership hopes, according to one of the UK's top experts in European law. The view of Professor Kenneth Armstrong of Cambridge University. To be given to the Holyrood Committee this week also highlights how Alex Salmond would have to rely on the UK government to pilot treaty revisions as the existing member state, and concludes that the planned move seems ambitious, if not simply wishful thinking. Now his view comes as today Alistair Carmichael declares in a speech in Brussels that the First Minister's intended Article 48 route is a dead end, and urges the Scottish government to take its head out of the sand. But why has this become a European or British Union question? If the SNP wants an independent Scotland, 
And more to the point, if the people of Scotland want to be independent, then let them have true independence, enshrining sovereignty to their own parliament in Edinburgh, where all decisions get made by elected representatives of the people. Today in our video library, now here's a cracking EU promotional video that Peter sent in to us. I hadn't seen this one before and liked it very much. Just love the Kill Bill styling. Of course, it looks as though the EU scrutineering committee dropped the ball with this one, as depicting a white female being attacked by three males, one Chinese, one Arab and one Jamaican, was just a little bit, perhaps a wee bit, <laughs> just a tad racially xenophobic and gender bigoted. Whoops! I bet Manuel and Herman and Schultze had a few quiet words with the EU propaganda, I mean marketing department, when the complaints came flooding in. Now, I just want to focus for a moment on a little mentioned feature on our website, the speaker events counter. Now, this counter records live speaking events from our database and is a count of the number of times that one of our team is out delivering a physical presentation to an audience somewhere in the UK. We're always welcoming of new events and new opportunities to speak to people. And that is one area where you can really help us. Perhaps you have a contact within a local organisation or group that holds events and would like a vibrant and engaging public speaker to add that extra bit of value to the event. The talks we give are a whistle-stop tour of the historical development of the relationship between Britain and the European Union from 1972 to the present day. The talks are interactive with time for debate and questions. And furthermore, there is no cost. So get in touch with Andrew via our website for more details. Now, did you also know that the Unit Nightly News is released under a permissive Creative Commons license? That means that you can syndicate our video and audio news programmes freely on your own website. You are free to copy and distribute the work wherever you wish. All that we ask is that you attribute our work back to us at theunituk.com. Now, if you're interested in having the nightly news run on your own website, then again, get in touch with Andrew via our website and we'll help you get it sorted out. So remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Or join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.